I was, I was doing this three strings like you were saying for a while there. They had arpeggiola. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, how's that going? It was going pretty good. Now, you was telling me to go like this on my... I was doing it this morning. Doing this. Well, no, that sounded pretty good. That was uh, does this string right here need some? Let's see, does it sound why? Well, why don't you tune up to me? Here's here's about where it should be. Here, yeah, it's so it's real low. It? Bring, bring it up. It's that last one here, the, this one. Yeah. This one. There you go. Do this. Try this. Yeah. Try your next one, the B string here. That's pretty close. This one. just a touch. It'll be the next side, the other side. For, okay, the, the last end here. There you go. Okay. A little more. And then this one. Well, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to lift the bar while you're doing this. So you might need a little more pressure on this end down here because it's. I can hear the string rattling on the high end. I'm still doing it. Is it still rattling? To Not, you? Well, you got to get to the other strings first. Go, go all the way up to the top strings. <laughs> Uh, those last two strings are still out. Can you go to this one? These two here. Yeah. Yeah. Go to, it's way high. Go. You got to go down. Other way. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. It's, it's easier actually if you reach over. It's this one, this one. Keep go the other way, you're going too high. You're gonna break the string. <laughs> Keep going. That way. Yeah. Okay. Now, now you're going a little too far. That's pretty close. All right, this one, the other one. It's a little sharp. You got to go lower. There you go. Yeah, it's a little bit better now. So I hear that you got. You don't have enough. Pressure on. Pressure on these. 
strings, the, the skinny ones. So, um, let me see how your strumming is. So, let me see something. You got your bar upside down, actually. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, so the longer part, right, is the part that you put on the strings. Yeah. <laughs> So, I, um, you remember the f formula, I guess, for doing most of these songs, so it would be, uh, in this case, we're going to say open, the G, open, and then the fifth fret. Come up with the seventh fret. Oh, seventh. I thought you said yeah. seventh. seventh. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> now we we've been calling this the open, right? Mm -hmm. And it is the open G chord. So if I make a G chord up here, same chord, just higher but it's no longer open right so when we talk about songs uh, we don't use that open we only use that for chords so it's like an open G and that means that we're not doing anything it's just the way everything's open all the strings are open but when we talk about songs and how the chords go together we always call that first one number one right so that would be the first chord in our song that has the three we've been working with. So that would be the open G. And we call that one. That's number chord number one. For It's true for any key, whether you're in A, B, C, D, E, F, or G. The first chord is always called the one chord. Okay. So... Um, this is a little bit confusing. That's why I want to start you thinking about this. Now we're talking about, again, we've been saying, well, you go to the fifth fret, okay, for that next chord in this G, C, D. And it is the fifth fret. However, when we talk about songs and the chords, it's not actually five because we're talking, that's talking about number of frets. In the chords in the song, it would be number, it would be four. And the way we get to that is we just count the musical alphabet. So we're starting at G, which is one. A, B, uh, C, right? So that gives us four. G, A, B, C. And that's how we say four. The next one, which is fret number seven. That's the three we've been working with a lot, right? Open, five, and seven. Well, that is actually the number five chord in the song. So it's G, A, B, C, which is number four, and D, which is number five. So when we talk about songs, that's how we say the chords, right? A lot of people will just say G, C, D, right? And that's fine, you can, you can do that too. But it's better if you use the numbers because that way you don't have to say, well, I'm gonna to go to key A. And now I'm gonna to have to say, okay, it's not A, it's not G, 
A, B, C, it's A, B, C, D, right? You don't have to count them. You just say it's one, four, five. And someone who's been learning about music will just know that it's one, four, five. Instead of having to jump between all these letters, it's always going to be one, four, five. It's the only thing that's changing is where you start from. So if I said, well, we're going to play in B flat, right? You find wherever your B flat is, which happens to be here. That is now number one. Number two chord, or actually the four chord, would be five frets up from that. One, two, three, four, five. So that doesn't change. It's still five frets, but it's chord number four. And then the next one would be seven frets up, which is the fifth chord. So, you know, kind of keep in mind that we talk about frets, right? Which starts with open. One, two, three, four, five. Or we talk about songs, which always starts with one. Not always, but generally, it starts with one. So, I'll say Amazing Grace, I'm going to say we start on the one in the key of G, which is that open. And then, then I've been telling you, okay, now the fifth fret. Right? But I'm going to start saying four. Because I want you to go to the fourth chord in whatever key that we're in. And the way to figure that out is, you know, it's still the same number of frets. So when I say the fourth chord, you're going to say one, two, three, four. Okay, it's right here. Five frets up from where we started. In this case, we start with the open. I'll say, okay, four chord. And five chord. And then one chord. So one is open. It's like you're open. It in the key of G it is, but that's what I'm trying to explain to you. If if someone says, "Well, I have to sing in the key of D," right? Okay. So where is your D chord on the dobro? With the just using the bar. Well, you already know that. You just you know if you have to figure it out, you can just say, "Well, G A B C D." Remember. That two two one that we talked about. So going from here, G one two one two one two. There's your D. So it's better just to memorize these really. I mean, so G A B C D E F G. So. If I, as a singer, say, well, I have to sing in D. Well, you already know what D is. So here it is. And they'll say, okay, my song is um, Amazing Grace. If you don't know the song, uh, they hopefully will be able to tell you, well, it's key of G and it's just one, four, five, right? So you already know, well, where's the, where is the four chord in the key of D? What do you do if you don't know where it is? You just count down. <laughs> count up five frets. One, two, three, four, five. There it is. Where's the five chord in the key of D? Count up seven frets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's always basically two frets up from you know five to seven. So if they say. thing to think about talking about chords we don't use the open right I mean songs we don't say open whatever we, it's always typically starts on chord number one well they'll say okay I have to sing in the key of A well you know where A is so now my song is um, again Amazing Grace 
and it's one four five. Well, where's the four chord? From from your one chord. Count up. Five. Oh. <laughs> Count up five frets. One, two, three, four, five. There it is. Right? And if you count the alphabet, musical alphabet, you'll know where that. You'll know what that is. It's A B C D. Right? It's fourth chord, so it's A B C D. And there it is. A, D. And then E. Okay, so when you hear me say one instead of open, you know, you start to have an idea of what I'm talking about. Because I'm typically when you're talking with other people that play instruments, you don't ever hear that term open unless they're talking well, it's just an open chord, right? O open G. Just an open G chord, that's all that means. But when they're talking about the song, they'll say, okay, one, four, five. And you have to be able to figure that out if you want to know what's going on. Or you can just watch what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, how about your, your rolls? Let me see the, just your open G roll. <laughs> Sample. <laughs> okay, remember we're only going the tip of the bar right there. Yeah. Not the whole bar. And we're just doing. And you can do it on I mean, any. That's when I had problems with. You can do it on any string. You can do it on these three. So I just I just want to see how your uh, roll is coming along. Here. So just do just do it open. Do do open strings. Okay. But stay try to stay on three strings, any three, it doesn't matter. I mean So try these three. So it's a uh, four, three, and one. Four, three. Okay, keep going. four chord or in the open G uh, do that a few times and at, at some point when you feel comfortable just go to the four chord again that will be how many frets up <laughs> five. five so right, but this, this is where we've been doing stuff right here so so just try this Four, three, and one, or three, two, one. It doesn't matter. Just any any three strings. Sonny.
<laughs> well, that just it just takes doing it a million times. I mean, it, and everybody's the same way. It, you just have to do it over and over and over. Yeah. I mean, there's no shortcut for that. You just have to do it until I you have to keep doing it. Yeah, just every day, you know, spend a couple minutes uh, just doing that. And after a while, it'll be very comfortable. It just takes time and. and I mean, again, there's, there is no shortcut for this. Yeah. This thing is... It's not natural. And you, you got to just keep doing it until you're comfortable with it, right? <laughs> So, uh, and a big part of that is, you know, being able to... So, part of what I hear is that your bar is kind of slanted here. So, I hear this. Hear how off that sounds? And that's because your bar is not straight. It's it's crooked. You gotta straighten it out so it's exactly parallel with that line. And and you get this nice little to watch I know um, so that's why I'm saying just work with the open strings until you get comfortable with it. And just I mean moving between different strings and you, you just play around with it. Just, you know whatever it doesn't matter there's no rules as far as these rolls other than you're just doing the can use any strings, any combination of strings, any up and forward and backwards. Like typically what I do is So I go one I go one, two, three, or three, two, one. And then go backwards. And, and that's just what I like the sound of that. Instead of unless the song actually does the I do like it just sounds better to me it's a little more intricate than same thing over and over but some songs actually have that in it um, even with the chords I do. that's one two three one three two one three one two three one Three, two, one, three. So it's just going backwards, that's all. So you start this way, do this, and then go backwards. Because it'd be really difficult to do this. You know, trying to do that finger twice. And then, I don't know, that just doesn't work if you're trying to do stuff fast. It'd be... <laughs> I can't do it anyhow. And I I don't hear anybody really who plays Durbo that does that. They do the um, a lot of them do what I do. That because you're just going like this basically. Go one da, 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 da. So you're going one two three one three two one three one two three one three two one three. You're just going backwards. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, you know, it actually, I think it sounds pretty good. You get that. I know it. You can just touch it. It just sounds so good. I, I touch it. It'll come. Just, <laughs> I'm telling you, this is a demanding instrument. It takes a lot of practice to get. It's not like a guitar. A guitar, your, your hands, you know, you, there's, it's painful to learn to play guitar because you're building up these calluses. you got those little strings pushing here. But once you get past that, it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, and learning the chords and all that are, are just, it is a lot easier. You don't have to worry about, oh, is my bar straight or is it exactly here or all this mess, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot to take on, so, <laughs> so don't get discouraged. Just, you got to keep working at it and keep practicing and just playing around with different, you know, that, that may not work for you. You may never get comfortable with this. 
but I, I promise you there is something in there in those finger movements that will feel comfortable to you after you kind of get used to do, doing all this keeping the bar and it might be some crazy thing like I can't even think of anything but yeah, who knows you, go, you know all the way around and it sounds still sounds good but you know if you that might you might find that really just it's there you don't really have to work hard at it once you get used to doing you know just this along mm -hmm. with the bar so something some some roll pattern in there somewhere that you probably will discover by accident when you're playing around with all will work for you and you'll get comfortable with it so and a lot of times i don't even do this i'll do that right that's that's a strum For you too. I mean, try that. Try that. Just do the. Um, it's th one, two, three, one, strong. So well. So do it like this. One, two, three, one. I'm talking about fingers here. One, two, three. Actually, would recommend you go up because go what you've up. done, you're going like this, right? Okay. And so when you instead go down of going to the bottom, you go straight. Well, down. there's a rhythm in, in your hand, right? Like this. Instead of going one, two, three, one, right? That's awkward to go two movements of the same direction. So you're going one, two, three, one, and then back. One, two, three, one, back. One, two, three. One, one back. Back. So that's you know, there's kind of a rhythm there. That, that feels natural. If you try to go one, two, three, one, one, that that's awkward. One, two, three, one, one. You know, that motion. So I just, I'm going one, two, three, one, coming back. I'm, yeah, go back to your thumb and then just strum. You gotta go back to one. There you go. Okay. Yeah, see that that may be you may find that more comfortable. I'm trying to remember that. The other strumming thing we worked on was the alternating, so we're going. Remember that? You just go on, you're hitting that low string, strum, then the fourth string. So you gotta put the strum in between them though. Again, it's it's this motion. It's one, two, one, two. So you're going. Okay. You do the one string and then you string. And you, on on the thumb, you're just going. With your thumb, do you go down each, or do you just go different ones? Well, you're just hitting the two, you're hitting one string, and then the strum, 
and then your thumb comes over to the fourth string. No, it's just on this one again. Uh, with your thumb, all you're doing is this. And then you're putting this. Yeah, but that's just a stand. That's just um, when you watch people play guitar. That's what they're doing. They're doing that. Uh, and then they go to the next chord. So we do the same thing on dobro. Do you do this with your thumb? Just and then yeah, the, the, one the, and the six and four strings are just with your thumb. And you might you might try to just practice that uh, individually before you put the the strum in, so you can just go. And then then try to get that strum in there without interrupting the. Still working on. You got to get the tip on that fourth string fourth right string. at just the tip of the bar. Like this. Yeah, but not too far because then you hit. You get that. You're touching the other string. So. Am I on it right now? Well, you're on the third string. Back up one string to the fourth. There you go. Just these three or four strings. That yep. So that was that E minor chord. Fourth string, the tip of that. I've got to remember that. And these four strings here. So you still got your bars a little too far, you're, you're muting the third string. There you go. Um, and now that um, that was the fourth chord in Amazing Grace. Blind. 
from the second fret down to the seventh D, up to the fifth. Yeah, so that E minor to the D. Again, this, it, all these things work the same way, no matter where you're playing. So if you notice um, where that is in relation to the G chord, the open G, or the first, the number one, right? Where is that minor chord in whatever key I'm playing in? It's two frets up from wherever I started. Well, this is not relevant right now because you're not using a capo, but... Um, and if I ever get used to this being up, up oh. instead of down... <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's kind of a mental hurdle everybody has to make. <laughs> Everyone wants to call this down. I don't know why. I, I, I guess because you're going... looks like you're going down or something. I don't know. I, I don't if know, I but it, it's up. It's up. up. <laughs> <laughs> we talk in, in music, we talk about pitch. Right, so we're going up. Oh, you got to just listen to it. And yeah, go. we're going up in pitch. And down is this way. So, uh, and it's the same way with the strings, right? We're going up from number six. To number one. Everything's going up in pitch. Uh, anyhow, we're two frets up from wherever we started. Now, again, this isn't really relevant right now because it's, you don't have a capo and I really don't want you to get one right now because, uh, you're not ready for it, so, but hopefully before too long, you will want to get one, and I actually have one that I'll give you if you want it, that you can use, because I don't use it anymore. So, so all this thing does is move this to wherever you put it, right? So now this becomes my open. So now, right? If, um, that up here. so I put that capo on there, I put it two frets up, and if you count the musical alphabet, you know, the open is G, right? What comes after G? A. We're now in the key of A, two frets up. It works exactly the same way. So I said one chord for Amazing Grace. You know it's A because we're in the key of A. The first thing you have to ask is, well, what key are you in? A. Four chord is count how many frets? D. It is D, but how many frets up? Five. Five frets. And the five chord is seven frets. Now, just because we change keys doesn't mean that the chords change, right? We still have that E minor in there. How do I find it? Well, it was two frets up, right? It, it's exactly the same place, but now we've moved this from here to here. So, there it is. Okay, it, it all works the same way no matter where you put this. So, we say... for a capo, but that's all it does. When you see people using these, uh, it, it's because, for two reasons. For some songs, especially in bluegrass, you, you need it to get the bluegrass sound. 
Well, you, you just need that. You can't do that without the capo or the key of the, in this key. And that's... Um, You're not going to do that without a capo, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, though, if, if it's not like a real bluegrass song, I don't, a lot of people will, but I don't need to have the capo. It's all in the key of A without the capo. Um, so, but the key thing I want you to remember and start thinking about is these numbers and how they work. Okay. They, it, it all works the same. No matter where someone says, okay, I want to sing in the key of E. I got to sing in E. Well, you know where E is, right? And you know how to get to the next chord in a one, four, five, and count it five frets. You might not want to play it way up here, but it's the same as down here, right? That, that 12th fret, the double dot on your neck, basically is where everything starts over. So if you play, and then here, it, it's the same from here. It's just, just a lower sound, that's all. So, so try to keep that in mind, all these numeric things, because it's hard to... When you start talking to other players, right, that have learned all this stuff, they don't want to... Say open they won't. I mean, you won't hear that term unless they're talking about a chord. Yeah. They won't say open, you know, we're going to play open 5th fret, 7th fret. They won't, you won't hear that. That's not the way we talk. They'll say, okay, it's in the key of G and it's just 1, 4, 5. Well, you know where G is and you know how to figure out and after a while you just memorize all this stuff. You know where the 4 is and you know where the 5 is. So... That's, that's what other people will use to talk about songs and how to play the song when you go to a jam, unless it's with you know people that are really super beginners that don't know that stuff yet. Yeah. So, if you learn all that stuff, you'll have a jump up on them. <laughs> if I ever learn it. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, the thing is, you'll memorize all that. After you play for a while, you'll just know. After you play a song in the key of G for a hundred times, you'll just know it's... You'll know where they are. You won't have to think about it. So, Okay, um, so that E minor chord... Okay, pull your bar back a little bit, because you've got it on the third string. Other way. There you go. See, there I've done it again. I, I go from this end to that. But this is the, okay. You count from here to that, right? One, two, three. Yeah, right. And that's what I'm getting confused at, too. So, pull it back. You're on the third string. you got to be on four. There you go. Now from here, um, any any roll pattern you want, it doesn't matter. Just, just do whatever you want on those four strings. And then go to the fifth fret. And then back to the E minor. Alternate between those chords so you're gonna.
see. So try, um, so this is, if you have time this week to work on just doing this. I mean, it doesn't, whatever strings, it doesn't matter, just, except for here, you gotta get this. It's these four strings, leave those two out. Four, three, two, and one. So when you go to the C chord, though, you can use any, all, all or any of the strings. Right? It's just that E minor chord here that you only want to use. Actually, a song. So, if you learn these song, these beginning chords. Fire on the Mountain from Marshall oh, that's Tucker. That's right, yeah. I knew it, but I just couldn't call the name of it. And you'll recognize this. Yeah. I forgot it. <laughs> Those two chords and, and uh, any roll kind of pattern you want, you know, you can work on that. on the roll stuff a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And one more thing before you go. Let me see if you've been working on that. Actually, I tried a little bit this morning. Yeah? How did it turn out? <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, you start with these, these two. two. The M2. Two and four. You start with that, okay. It's two and four and then There you go. You gotta get both strings up. Thank you. 
So then you go back, go back to uh, two and four. Call from back to two and four. And after you went back to down to twelve. You go from twelve, twelve to ten. Back to ten. Okay. And then three and five. It's, it's from here, and then back to 12. Let's see. Let's see. Start from here and go down. And come back to 12, and then 5 and 3. That's what I was wanting to, and you know, the last two, I was wanting to remember that, but I can't That's think of how it Those went. two. Was that it? <laughs> I was close. <laughs> Two and four. Two and four. Now don't slide up. Don't it's, slide. it's here. And then right back to twelve. Well, it, you can slide there, but it doesn't sound right. You want it to be. So that 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 it. You know that doesn't really. You can do it, just doesn't fit the song quite right. So. Both strings. I want to slide it every time. Well, there is a slide on that one. And then now is where you're supposed to slide. So when you're going to slide up on two and four again, back to where you started. So right here. Hmm. Now you got to go back here. Back to ten, probably. Now, back to ten and strings two and four. Slide back up to twelve. Back to ten and slide back to twelve. Yep. Well, it's, it's right here where you started. That's the same two notes you started on. Oh, here. Yeah, so slide up from ten to twelve. Put the whole thing together. Now slide up on 
from 10 to 12 on strings 2 and 4. You gotta move back down to ten. Slide up on two and four. Slide up on two and four. There you go. And that's the end one. The end. Well, it's not the end, no, but that's just where oh, you've gone. <laughs> You gotta go up, not down. On two and four. From ten to twelve. Two and four to ten to twelve. From ten to twelve. There you go. So that whole phrase sounds like this. there yet. <laughs> that little part is, you, you can do it several ways, but I do the... So just practice on that. Um, That's that last slide is 10 to 12. There you go. So I've got it now? Is that it? That's, you're getting it. It's almost there. You, you, you keep wanting to do this slide up from 12. With, it, it's from 10 to 12 at the end there. You got to go back down to 10 and then slide up to 12 on strings 2 and 4. Slide it back up to 12 on 2 and 4. Get that part down and we'll move on to the next part because it's a little tricky. Now you can do it the next part on a single string, but and then we'll go back to ten. On two and four and slide up. You gotta slide up, not down. From 10 to 12. Oh, gosh. 10 to 10 to 12. Oh, 10 to 12. There you go. Try that one more time. The whole thing. Back down to 10 and then slide up 